You may not believe this, but hear me out. Python and Excel brings the best of both worlds to machine learning, and I'm about to show you why. Excel is arguably the world's most popular data tool due to its user-friendly interface. You can see the data stored in cells, you can click on it, you can drag it, and you can easily analyze and manipulate it. Python, on the other hand, is one of the world's most powerful data tools, but you need to write code even for the simplest of tasks. So in this demo, I'll show you how you can combine Excel's hands-on nature with Python's machine learning capabilities to build a clustering model in a matter of minutes and in fewer than 15 lines of code. Here in Excel, you'll see that I'm working with a Marvel movie data set which contains different performance metrics for each film. Now, the first step, since this will be a data science project, is to start with a question. Now, lucky for us, the source for this data set, which was Makeover Monday, already did that for us. So the question will be, which is the best performing Marvel movie? So that's what we'll set out to answer. Now, the next step is to select our approach. In this case, we're not trying to predict anything, so we don't need to use regression or classification models. Instead, we can take an unsupervised learning approach and segment these movies into different groups using clustering. And one of those groups will hopefully contain the best performing movies. So now that we know that we want to use a clustering model, we need to select the right features for it. So let me quickly transpose these columns over here. Use the transpose function in Excel. Grab all the columns except for the films. Press enter and let's take a look at what we've got. Now, if we're trying to measure performance, then we're definitely interested in commercial success. And worldwide gross definitely seems like a good feature for that. Now, it does look like that is broken down in a number of different ways down here, but the overall worldwide gross is probably the best indicator. Now, the percentage of the budget recovered is also a great performance indicator. We could also add the budget, but it seems like overkill since this is really already a ratio of these two. Next up, we've got the critics and the audience scores, which we're definitely interested in as well because commercial success is a part of a movie's performance, but its popularity is another one. So let's keep these two features. We also have the difference between the two, but I don't think that's as relevant. If anything, that's more of a measure of polarity or controversy, not so much of success or performance. Now, finally, we've got the year all the way down here, but that isn't really a measure of anything. So it looks like we'll be sticking with these four features over here. So let me delete this. We can delete the rest of the columns. I can select them. Control minus, and let's change the column names on these to snake case so that we can use them with Python later. So let's just call this one gross. This can be percent budget. This can be critics and audience. So now we have the right features. Now it's time to scale the data because clustering is a distance based model. Now, for that, we can either use standardization or normalization. So let's see if these features are normally distributed. And this is where we can start to leverage Python to create a quick seaborne pair plot. So to do that, I'm going to go to any of these cells. I'm going to go equal pi for Python. Press tab to enable the Python environment. And let's just use SNS for seaborne. Got the pair plot down here. Let's select the data. Close that out. Control enter to commit the Python code. Wait for that to load. Pair plots are notoriously slow. You'll see that we get a Python object in return. What we can do is change that so that the output is an Excel value. Again, wait for it to calculate. And you'll see that we get a tiny pair plot image inside of our cell. Let's go ahead and insert the linked image over here. Resize this and we've got a pair plot inside of Excel. Isn't that awesome? And we can clearly see the distribution for each one of our features. None of these are really normal, so I'm just gonna delete that, and we're going to go with a normalization approach. So I'm just gonna call this scaled over here. Again, let's open up the Python environment. I'm gonna use the larger formula window here. Now we'll start by importing, so from sklearn.pre 
processing, we'll want to import min-max scalar. Here it is. Let's add our data or our features to a data frame. Select those. And to scale them, we can use min-max scalar. Fit transform. Use our data frame. Control enter. And you'll see that we get a NumPy array back. And if we change it to Excel value, you'll see that it will spill these scaled values for these features. Now we could either keep these here and reference those, or let's simply add these to a variable that we can reference moving forward. Control Enter once again. Let's just keep this as a Python object. And we have our scaled data stored in a data frame. Now, once the data is scaled, we need to find the right number of clusters for our k-means model. And the best way to do that is using something known as an inertia plot. So what we're going to do is fit the models with 2 to 10 clusters, calculate the inertia for each one, and then see where we have an inflection point. And let me actually show you how that's going to happen. So we're going to want to use clusters, inertia, we want from 2 to 10. Oops, looks like these are percentage points. Go back to general, two, three, drag it down so we go all the way to 10. Benefits of drag and drop Excel, of course. Make these bold. And for the inertia, again, pi to open up the Python environment. We'll want to import from sklearn cluster, import k-means, and we'll store the model in a k-means variable call the function. Now the number of clusters is going to be first equal to two, then three, then four, then five, etc. Now in Python, you typically need to write a loop for this, but because we're using Python in Excel, let's just point it at this cell, fit the model, and then apply it down to fit it with the rest of these values for k. So n clusters equals to two in this case. I'm going to keep the number of iterations to 10 since we're going to be fitting a bunch of models. And let's set a random state, 42, just so that we can replicate the results. Close my k-means function. Let's fit it. Using our normalized data. And then let's return the inertia. There we go. Control Enter. Get the value here as a Python object. Let's use the Excel value instead. Same number at the end. Check this out. If we apply this down, we get the inertia for all of these values of k. Again, just by dragging and dropping. Amazing. And again, you typically need to write more Python code to visualize this in an inertia plot, but we're in Excel. Let's just select the data, go to insert, scatter plot with a line, and there we go just like that we've got our inertia plot move this back up here edit these axes let's go from 2 oops to 10 in steps of 1 close this out let's add some axis titles here so this is k or clusters and this is the inertia for our inertia plot and if we take a look at this here, you'll see that the elbow or the inflection point is around here at k equal to three or three clusters. So let's go with a three cluster model. I'm gonna write my model over here, make this bold, and I'm just gonna copy the code from here, give myself some space, start our Python environment, paste it in here, don't need to return the inertia here. We're going to want to fit a three cluster model. We can change the number of iterations to auto now, since we're just fitting one model here. Let's call this new variable k means three. Fit the model. And all we need to do now is add the cluster labels to each one of our films here. Call it cluster and check out how easy it is. Again, Python environment. Got our k means three variable, and let's just return the labels. Oops, control enter. Let's spill the array, and beautiful. And let's just do a quick spot check. So it looks like 
let's see, Endgame, Infinity War, they both belong to the same cluster, which makes perfect sense since they were both widely successful Marvel releases. So we have our clusters defined. Next, we need to interpret the cluster centers. Sure, we know which movies are in which cluster, but what do they have in common? So let's write clusters over here. Let's bring in the unique values. We can sort those. This is a spilled array, so we can reference it as such. Close that out, press enter. We've got the three clusters. Let me copy the feature names, place them over here. And let's return in a Python environment, k means three dot cluster centers, control enter. Again, spill the results and check it out. Because we're in Excel, we can just select these values, conditional formatting, add a color scale, and the patterns are very easily starting to emerge here. So let's take a look and add a description for each one. It looks like the movies in cluster zero, we're getting all blues here, which means they weren't really very commercially successful or well received. So let's just say least commercial success and popularity. For the movies in cluster one, still not a lot of commercial success, a little bit more than cluster zero, but they were much more popular. So let's just say low commercial success, high popularity. Finally though, the movies in cluster two were much more commercially successful and definitely much more popular. So these have the most commercial success and popularity. And we can quickly calculate how many we have for each cluster. So how many movies are in each? Let's call this movies. And we can just use an Excel function for this. So count if my range, my criteria, enter. And we have six movies as the least popular, 18 as the, I guess, middle ground, and six as the most popular which seems like a very reasonable distribution. So now all that's left for us to do is to share our insights. Which is the best performing Marvel movie? Well, it looks like there are six here. So let's take a look at what those are. Let's say best performing Marvel movies. And what we can do is simply filter our list of films wherever the cluster is equal to two. Close that out. And let's see what we've got. We have Avengers Endgame and Infinity War. We have the original Avengers. We've got Black Panther and two Spider-Mans. We have Far From Home, which is a little bit of a surprise for me. And also No Way Home, which was of course wildly popular with the old Spider-Man coming back. So as a Marvel fan myself, this seems like a good list. So we have our answer. But if we want to take it one step further, we can visualize this with a scatter plot. Now, ideally, we'd use another unsupervised learning technique like PCA to reduce these four columns into two and then use that in a scatter plot. But for now, let's just select one that represents commercial success, one that represents popularity, and use those. So I'm going to go with percent budget and critics here. Select them. Go to insert a scatter plot. And what I'd love to be able to do here each dot represents a movie, so I'd like to use color to represent each cluster. The problem is that it's not very easy to do that in Excel natively. No problem though, because we have Python in Excel now. So let me delete this. And over here, I'm gonna do another Python function. Let's use sns.scatterplot. The data that we're gonna use is equal to this data over here. Let me continue right over here. The values for the x-axis are going to be percent budget. For the y, we could do critics. I'm going to do audience. It just seems more relatable to me. And if you want to color them by cluster, we can use the hue argument. Cluster. Close that out. Control enter. Move over here. Show this as an Excel value add the linked image, 
And there we go. Now, this isn't the best color palette in the world, so let's change the palette to something like bright. Control enter. And beautiful. So we've got Cluster 2, which is our most popular or best performing Marvel movies, all the way over here with the most commercial success and popularity. We've got the middle ground here with high popularity, but not so much commercial success. And then Cluster 0 with the least commercial success and popularity. So there you have it. In about 15 minutes, we were able to combine the best parts of Excel and Python to build and interpret a k-means clustering model. Now, if you'd like to dive deeper, check out our award-winning self-paced courses, guided projects, and portfolio tools, and create your own personalized learning plan for free. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, make sure to like and subscribe for more data content just like this.